So uh, we've seen this uh, customer last year and uh, we come up with some uh, concepts, some ideas of what the garden could look like and uh, they liked it, they liked the ideas and so what we've done today, we've come out and we're just doing a concept plan and putting it together now so they can see what they're going to have. Well, what we've got here, this is, uh, we've come up with a concept, we've drawn the outer perimeter of the garden, representing the walls, the garage, uh, the lawn. We've got A to B, le um, and you know, the, the length by width. And what we've also done is the proposal of this meandering path, where the planting board is gonna be, and where the gabion baskets are gonna be in this part of the garden. And all we've done at the moment, we've just penciled in because we can change things as and when. So the idea of this garden is that what we don't want to be doing, we've got to think about um, taking things out. So expect that seesaw effect. So what we're going to do, we're going to bring the garden up uh, because it drops away on that side with some gabion baskets, not the full height because it'll just look a little bit silly, just too high. So we're going to go what we call with the lie of the land, bring up the gabion baskets in an L shaped format, have a border, and then we're going to edge the border with a brick edge or as a lawn but i just think that if we if we give it a brick edge uh, it's it's acting as a as a mowing strip for when they're cutting the lawn going oh you're going Aha, when you're playing so here we are we're on this project now we've got a good sub base in here and the boys will be on we put a good sub base in here aren't we it is we solid are. um it's not going to go anywhere we've got we're gonna have to have a step in this part of the, of the garden and it's going to come around here on paved area but we're going to be using these these are from tobermore these are uh retro they are 190 i'm trying to get the, uh, the dimensions there 190 by 50 by 60 and this is slate and they come this they come there's like a variation in color you can just about see a little bit of buff and gray they're absolutely perfect so we're going to be laying these in a, in a herring bone format through here but we are going to have a contrasting brick edge going around to create and define the shape of this this area and this little area here is going to meander around and this is just going to be perfect for a seat next to a planted area now though we've come up with a concept the reality is that as the ground is risen up now and we've leveled off a little bit with that seesaw effect is once we've got the levels in once we've got this bit in we can actually see the shape of the brick edge that we're going to put on this side and then make good on this side with some new turf got the gaming baskets in the boys have finished those off today we stepped them up as well to give it a little bit of contrast not just to a flat area so it it's just blending in going with the lie of the land and um yeah it's looking good well i think so well these are our retro bricks all the way from ireland they've had them in stock here now a couple of days but they've got a couple of lorries down early in the morning no lorries gone out at all. Two lorries broke down. New lorries as well.
So here we are, uh, we're back on the project this morning. You can see by the time lapse uh, of what we've done yesterday. Let's turn the music there. We don't want to be getting done for a copyright infringement. So we've got this little reception area and uh, because of the, the amounts that we had to buy, um, we we're only going to do a little bit in here, but what we're going to do, we're going to use everything up. It just makes sense to go back underneath here a little bit. So when our client comes in, they got a nice spacious area because obviously this sort of thing gets in the way and you want to be able to walk on a nice flat surface and uh, and maneuver around so we're going to get on with this now this morning we are putting these contrasting uh, bricks on the edge just to add a little bit of flavor to it but laying the uh, the retro yesterday um, they look absolutely fantastic and i can't wait to sand it in and brush it all up we got a number of cuts to do on that side and around the corner but I think what we need to do is get the blocks off the drive, get them laid, get them down, and then we can, we can move around. So let's get on with it. end of the day and uh, <laughs> you have to take that sigh of relief don't you at the end of the day when things have uh, it's been quite intense today we've been laying these retro uh, cobbles from Tomo and uh, good looking good little good looking little product totally different from lots of the other stuff that's out there and that's what makes a difference to your garden um, when you're looking for a product that something that you like so that it's appealing to you but you've also got to think about that you don't want to have what everyone else has in in their garden you want something a little bit different and certainly with these toe more retro blocks they give you something a little bit different uh, it's got that continental feel about it it's got that retro look uh, those cobbles and uh, it looks absolutely fantastic and they're uh, really really pleased with the outcome of this product. We're gonna be showing this a little bit more in the near future, so stay tuned and uh, we'll show you how it turns out. And uh, pictures before, during and after, what's the best? Well, I think after is the best pictures, isn't it, to have? And uh, over the moon with it, so watch this space. <laughs> Here we are, it's uh, a sunny day, but it hasn't been sunny for some time now, has it? <laughs> we've had rain, we've had frost, we've had snow, and uh, this project here this morning, it was dry weather, but the blocks were still damp, and the thing is about kiln-dried sand, it's almost like flour and water, okay? It just gets all very mushy, and um, you can't get it into between the blocks. You want the sand to run down, so what we want really we want a real dry day where the blocks have been bedded on mortar around the outside i've dried them off with a gas lamp but no sooner than drying them because there's contact with the mortar bed the damp's just coming through so really in theory this should just be left for a dry day it's functional they can walk on it they're not going to trip over it it's not a hazard um you don't want to leave it too long because you don't want any sort of um, sort of weeds and seeds sort of getting into it and uh, germination happening then then you get the the weeds coming up we don't want that okay but nothing's really growing we're approaching spring but nothing's really 
taking hold now certainly on a new project like this nothing's really ingressed into it so it's a bit annoying this morning and what we're gonna have to do now to make it look nice we're gonna have to wash it off okay to make it look smart and then what will happen is it will take the sand down which is good if it needs to top up it needs to top up And remember, it's so important that the compaction of your saw you're putting in should only relate to the foot compaction as you're walking on it. You don't want to be doing any more than that, so don't get running a compactor plate over it and creating a crust on the top where the water won't penetrate. Well, the one thing that we can be sure of in this country is the rain. There you are. Never fails. Never fails. Well, there we are, end of the day, got all the soil in, <laughs> apart from that little bit there. So that's how it goes, but it's looking a lot better, a lot, lot better. Well, it's home time now and uh, always at the end of the day, it's always good to go and see your client and go over things, explain to them what you've done and uh, what your what the next stage is. And uh, I've done that and uh, they're happy and they made it a fantastic cup of tea so we just took the cup out it's looking better honest it really is and it'll work Yesterday the soil was nice and dry and obviously we had rain last night, copious amounts of rain I might add, so that's made the surface that little bit more sticky. So the thing we're using this morning, we're using some old boards, that, uh, some shuttering boards that I, that I use and uh, what we're actually doing is we're boarding over left and right, up and down and we're adding soil where required. We know that it's good compaction underneath and then when we lay the turf, okay, when we lay the turf on top of the surface and then we board the turf in the same way as what we boarded the soil. We know we could have a nice flat surface. Still a little bit more work to be done. It looks like we've got a little bit of sunshine at the moment, but we're gonna have to get on because I think it's gonna rain. Well, the soil is now finally in place. We've probably got about two more wheelbarrows and it's amazing the amounts of soil that this garden has eaten up, you know. We've got a good bed for the water now to drain through. It's got a much better porosity value, allowing the water to drain through, then hitting that bad ground underneath. But remember, the topography of the ground, all the water should be flowing this way through the garden, through the gabion baskets and away down into the, the lower area. So all in all, really, really pleased. We've got to get on because we don't want to be doing this in the rain.
Jen this morning at Inscape Center. They do a quality turf. Um, I could get my turf local, but I prefer this this blender turf. is uh, It's a much better, I think. Another you know, uh, wet day, but absolutely perfect for laying turf. Well, there's our turf there. Um, we've got to put that down. I'm not going to put anything on the time lapse now because the camera's going to get absolutely soaking. But let's just get this in. You think of this now. Real good grass. Um, this is from Inscapes. Not getting paid to say it, so it's not a paid advert. Good grass, quality. You can, you can always tell a good turf uh, when it's thin like that. So we've got really got our lawn really prepared really well, our ground rather. And then, look, none of this is falling apart. It's nice and fresh. It's come in this morning. I think it was cut yesterday because it was a good day yesterday, but let's go and do it. Can I have a look? So, that's where we boarded it yesterday. So we're going to get the turf down and we're going to board it as we go a little bit, but then we can board it a, a bit more later on um, and try and keep off it. So let's get this done. the edge all the way so we're not left with any cuts later yeah so as I said we've got the cuts done as, as, as we've gone along I don't really want it on there so we'll move that off in, in a moment do it on the paving though we've sanded it in and if we're just coming along once we got to that edge we use up all the turf hopefully I've got enough uh, in the quantities to overlay and then at a later date once the grass is taken in a couple of weeks time we won't do it straight away because i just like to live with the 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 over overspill first the overlay and then we can cut it out once the grass is bent and get the boards on there then we can cut the shape so it gives the customer a little bit more time to live with the look of it and how far they want it back but i'm really pleased with this guy so I was asked then by Dan, what would I prefer? Would I prefer real grass or artificial grass? Without a doubt, without a doubt, real grass. But unfortunately, in some situations, certainly with new builds, they never ever put anything decent in the in the gardens. And, in, and I mean, really, in some cases, it's just all stone completely. And the cost to actually introduce a real lawn would be probably more expensive than artificial grass in some situations. And I think in I think in cases there um, there's no there's no options, you know. And I wanted to add is that the thing is the way society has gone, where everybody's running around at under a mile an hour and really sort of sort of going crazy all the time, you know, just they never seem to have time to cook a proper meal. If they haven't got time to cook a proper meal, okay. Okay, and they're doing the microwave thing. They are not going to have proper time to look after their lawn. The lawn's going to just get in the mess. And then what happens as a result of that? The parents don't allow the kids in the garden because it gets all muddy, gets overgrown. Nobody cuts the grass. Nobody doesn't do anything with it. 
and um, at least I suppose in some respects the artificial grass and I don't know what your opinions are I'm just looking at it and trying to be fair here is that at least it allows the children to get out in conditions like this and when they go back in they don't take any mess and I understand the argument for that so and I might add at this point is that when we think see the copious amounts of plastic that is out there in industry in general we can't just blame the artificial grass industry for for this we just can't blame them at all um there is there is copious amounts of plastic absolutely everywhere all the time and my argument would be in some cases and like i said i prefer real grass it's, it's for me but in some cases again when you actually think of when that grass has been down for 15 years no mowing no shrimming no chemicals okay no oils or fuels that you have to put into that how do they quantify and come up with this reasoning that artificial grass is worse for the environment than that and if you've got an opinion on this i want to know what it is because i value your opinion this channel is not just about me don't forget to hit the like button and more importantly please subscribe have a great day Well, that's, that's it. We've uh, laid the turf. We boarded the soil uh, before, and then we've laid the turf and we've boarded it again, and it's really looking nice and flat. And uh, we'll probably go over again in the future, just board in, make sure that the, the underside of the turf, where all the roots are, gets into that loam and starts taking. I believe in a week, you will see new roots on there you'll see all the, you'll be able to pull the grass and you'll be able to hear it tearing uh, not because the grass on top because the roots underneath but that's looking good we've sort of staggered the grass around the outside edge there simply because we've overlaid and now we'll be able to cut the shape out and sort of mirror these really meandering curvaceous shapes in the brickwork that's it if you need any advice go to the website www.greentoplandscapes.co.uk or drop us an email info at greentoplandscapes.co.uk if you need any help we're here and available don't forget to subscribe and uh, hit the like and the notification button have a great day